it's the first time I've addressed the reigning UK Chamber of the Year. So before I go any further, I'd like to congratulate all of you on that. Because it's no exaggeration to say that Labour's ambitions for government, our most important mission to get Britain building again, grow our way out of the suffocating cost of living crisis, will depend on your future success. And now, before you pulled up that fantastic palatial drive outside, some of you may have travelled here today along the A1 a road that is absolutely critical to doing business in this region, indeed for the whole of the east side of England. But as many of you will know, a little bit further up from here between Morpeth and Ellington, there's a stretch of the A1 that the Prime Minister has recently promised to upgrade. But there's a catch, because he announced he would upgrade it in 2020 when he was Chancellor, just like Theresa May's government did in 2017, and David Cameron did in 2014, just like the Conservative Manifesto promised in 2010. And it's a metaphor for how our country's been run for the last 13 years. The cameras get called, the press release is written, all smiles for the photos. And then it's back to Westminster, job done, rinse and repeat. It's a story you see right across Britain. Infrastructure projects, some with billions already committed. Businesses planning around them, strategies developed in rooms like this. But the projects and investment get stuck, blocked by objections, consultations, legal challenges, ballooning costs. Delays, 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 until in the end, it's easier just to pack up and move on. We all know about HS2, a project the Conservatives couldn't get built, even at the cost of £400 million per mile. That's the most expensive railway in the world ever. And I'm afraid to say that all the hallmarks of that project the waste, the stagnation, the short-term sticking plaster politics, an inability to roll our sleeves up and get things done that will actually grow our economy can be seen right across the country. I mean, right now, the number of businesses going under has soared to its highest level in years. And as you will all appreciate, every single one, a personal tragedy, an ambition, a dream, an investment in a better future, gone. Now, I'm not here today to hit you over the head about this. You can see the country just as clearly as I can. But next week is the King's Speech, and we can already see that it will only bring more of the same. A manifesto for the 14th year of Tory failure and the starting gun fired on the next general election. A choice between a Conservative Party with no plan for the future, hurtling down the only high-speed project it's ever managed to build, the highway to British decline, or the Labour alternative, a party that understands the potential that lies in regions like this, that has a plan to grow every corner of this country, We'll work with you to get the North East building again, get our future back with a decade of national renewal. Because, mark my words, Britain needs this King's speech to kick start a big build. We need to focus on the real problems that face businesses and communities of this region. That's why a Labour King's speech would rip up the red tape in our planning system that stops us building the infrastructure you need, would establish a new generation of technical colleges, a plan for the higher skills that you need, and would bring forward a modern industrial strategy, work hand in glove with the private sector, invest in the potential of regions like this, and win the race for the jobs of the future. 
That is the job of government as I see it. We have to provide the businesses, communities and people of this nation with the conditions to succeed. A fundamental deal, if you like, that we serve the country while you drive it forward. The Tories can't do this. Rishi Sunak is too weak to stand up to the blockers on his backbenchers. Too haunted by the ghosts of conservative imagination to see the country's problems as you see them. So, if you'll indulge me, I want to set out exactly how our plan would benefit your business and grow the economy of this proud region in three steps. Step one, we will get the North East building again. We will take on the blockers that hold a veto over British aspiration. We will build one and a half million homes right across Britain with opportunities for first time buyers here in the North East. New infrastructure to support businesses, families and communities to grow. Roads, warehouses, grim connections, labs all built quicker and cheaper. And with that, a prize for your business. A path to a stronger skills base. A happier workforce. More dynamism. More demand. More growth. I mean, let me just give you a couple of examples. The Thames Tunnel in East London. A project with a planning application 30 times longer than the complete works of Shakespeare. 60,000 pages. 800 million pounds worth of taxpayers' money spent without even breaking ground. Or take Sizewell Sea, a next generation nuclear power station in Suffolk. A 20 billion pound project of national importance, vital for British energy, security and independence. Now this one had 40,000 pages of its planning application devoted to data on the environment. And yet, it's been held up in the courts on account of a failure to assess the environmental impact. I could go on and on and on. The examples are countless. But as a country, we can't afford to go on. Not like this. Because the challenges this inertia creates for business and communities like yours, they're enormous. It's why our roads are so congested compared to other countries. Why millions are denied the security of home ownership. Why you can't take up the opportunity of clean British energy. The cheaper bill. OK, well, that is Sir Keir Starmer there at the North East Chamber of Commerce in County Durham uh, addressing business leaders and sounding, I have to say, very much like a Conservative Party member rather than Labour. Infrastructure, technical investing in private business and playing up the North-South divide as you expect. Well,